Have you ever paused to wonder about the profound significance of deserts in our world? They're not just barren stretches of land, devoid of purpose. Quite the contrary. While we may initially perceive deserts as empty canvases waiting to be filled, they've proven to be reservoirs of hidden treasures and unexpected marvels. In this captivating video, we embark on a journey to uncover the extraordinary tales of discovery that have unfolded amidst these seemingly desolate landscapes. You'll be very amazed by the mystery and secrets waiting to be unearthed in the heart of the desert. Nevada Desert's Secret In the vast expanse of the Nevada desert, a scene of seemingly endless aridity unfolds beneath the scorching sun. Its landscapes, though undeniably beautiful, exude an air of harshness and unforgivingness. Characterized by extreme temperatures that can soar above 50 degrees Celsius during the day and plummet drastically at night, this environment poses a formidable challenge to the survival of even the most resilient life forms. It is within this inhospitable terrain, one of the driest places on Earth, that our story commences. In the year 1917, against this desolate backdrop, a farmer confronted the ultimate challenge, securing water in a locale where it was as precious as gold. This farmer, whose very livelihood depended on cultivating the land, understood all too well that without water, his crops would wither and perish, taking his entire way of life down with them. Determined to sustain his ranch and propelled by the imperative need to irrigate his fields, he embarked upon a seemingly quixotic quest to unearth water beneath the parched earth. Yet, Digging for water in the desert is no trivial undertaking. It demands not only physical strength and endurance, but also an unwavering spirit. Armed with little more than a shovel and a fervent hope, the farmer embarked on his monumental task. Each scoop of sand bore witness to his unyielding determination as days stretched into weeks. The relentless sun beat down upon him, a constant reminder of the desert's indifferent gaze upon his struggle. Progress was agonizingly slow, the sun-baked ground offering formidable resistance to his efforts. Every attempt to penetrate its surface demanded Herculean exertion, with progress measured in inches rather than feet. Despite the toil, the farmer's resolve remained unshaken. He held firm to the belief that water lay concealed beneath the surface, waiting to be discovered. With each layer of sediment and rock he encountered, the desert's ancient history unfolded before him revealing clues to its enigmatic past. He learned to decipher the signs of the earth, understanding that moisture, however scarce, followed its own clandestine pathways underground. Yet, despite his unwavering efforts, water remained elusive. The desert's extreme conditions, with temperatures exceeding 50 degrees Celsius during the day and plummeting at night, subjected the farmer to a relentless cycle of heat and cold. Sandstorms, like unwelcome intruders, would occasionally sweep through, undoing his progress with callous cruelty. Yet, amidst the harshness, the desert revealed moments of grace. In the cool of early mornings and late evenings, when the sun's tyranny relented, the landscape revealed its breathtaking beauty. Shades of red, orange, and gold adorned the sky, while profound silence enveloped the land. In these moments, the farmer felt a deep connection to the land, a sense of belonging that fueled his determination to persevere. His endeavor transcended mere physical labor. It became a battle of wills against the desert itself. Each day brought new challenges, but also a deepening understanding of the natural world. The farmer came to realize that the desert, with all its adversities, was not an enemy to be conquered, but rather a puzzle to be solved. A Surprising Discovery after enduring relentless toil under the scorching sun for weeks on end, the farmer's efforts finally paid off, albeit in an unexpected manner. One day, as the man dug in the middle of the desert to find water and what happened next terrified the world, the ground suddenly gave way beneath him, unleashing a rush of water from the depths below. Initially, it seemed like a miraculous answer to his prayers, as if the desert itself was yielding its precious liquid. However, this joy was short-lived. The water that gushed forth was scalding hot, turning the area around the hole into a misty spectacle. It soon became apparent that this was no ordinary spring. The farmer realized with disappointment 
that the water's extreme temperature made it unsuitable for irrigation. His dreams of using it to sustain his crops and ranch faded as quickly as they had emerged. While the discovery of hot water in the arid landscape was remarkable, it brought its own set of challenges. Its high temperature rendered direct use impossible, posing a threat to any vegetation it would touch. Additionally, the sheer volume of water and the lack of resources to cool it down made any practical solution unattainable. The farmer grappled with the harsh reality of the situation, feeling the weight of disappointment and frustration. The desert, with its cruel whims, seemed to offer hope only to snatch it away at the last moment. The water, intended to be a source of life and prosperity, became a reminder of the harsh realities of attempting to tame such a hostile environment. The farmer's vision of lush fields thriving in the desert vanished like steam in the wind. Faced with an insurmountable obstacle, the farmer had to make a difficult decision. His cherished ranch, once a symbol of hope for the future, could not survive without a viable water source. After much contemplation and with a heavy heart, he reluctantly concluded that abandoning the ranch was the only sensible course of action. The decision to depart weighed heavily on the farmer's heart. The ranch wasn't merely a plot of land. It embodied his aspirations and the sweat of his brow. It symbolized a dream of forging a life in harmony with the land, of triumphing against the odds to stake a claim in the American West. Yet, the relentless desert, with its harsh conditions and now boiling water, had other plans. As he packed his belongings and prepared to bid farewell, a sense of defeat washed over him. The land he had fought so valiantly to cultivate would be left behind, a stark testament to the futility of his endeavors. The desert, indifferent to his dreams and struggles, would persist as it had for millennia, its secrets shrouded beneath the shifting sands. Meanwhile, the hot spring continued to spout its steaming water, wild and untamed, a natural marvel born from the farmer's failed quest for water. In the years that followed, the farmer's tale faded into obscurity, overshadowed by the spectacle of the geyser he unintentionally unleashed. Yet for those who knew the story, it served as a poignant reminder of nature's unpredictability and the resilience required to confront its challenges head-on. The transformation over decades into what we now know as the fly geysers. After the farmer's departure, the Nevada desert reclaimed its silent sovereignty, leaving behind only the enigmatic presence of the steaming geyser as a solitary reminder of human endeavor amidst the desolate expanse. For years, the geyser and its environs remained forgotten, a remote curiosity overshadowed by the vastness of the desert and the relentless march of time. Nature, with its inexorable power of transformation, began shaping the site, molding the geyser and its surroundings into a spectacle that would eventually capture the fascination of all who encountered it. As decades passed, the memory of the farmer and his quest faded into obscurity, and the geyser remained largely unnoticed, known only to a handful of locals and occasional wanderers. However, the late 20th century witnessed a resurgence of interest in renewable energy and natural marvels, shining a new light on geothermal activity and its potential applications. It was during this era of exploration and discovery that the area was rediscovered, this time by individuals and groups fascinated by the prospects of geothermal energy and the unique features of the geyser. Over time, the geyser, continuously emitting hot water since its accidental creation, began to form an extraordinary structure. Minerals dissolved in the water accumulated around the geyser's vent, gradually forming a vibrant and surreal mound that stood out vividly against the desert backdrop. This remarkable formation, eventually named the Fly Geyser, became a mesmerizing tapestry of reds, greens, and yellows, with its colors derived from the thermophilic algae thriving in the hot, mineral-rich water. Despite the initial excitement, and the anticipation of harnessing the geothermal energy of the geyser, attempts to utilize its water-faced, daunting challenges. The unpredictable flow and fluctuating temperature of the water proved difficult to manage, while the delicate ecosystem surrounding the geyser was easily disturbed. Moreover, ethical considerations arose regarding the exploitation of this natural wonder for industrial purposes. Consequently, 
efforts to commercialize the geothermal water were largely abandoned, and the focus shifted towards preservation and scientific exploration. As news of the fly geyser spread, it attracted a diverse range of visitors, including scientists, artists, and the curious. Researchers were intrigued by the geyser's rapid growth rate and the thriving ecosystem of extremophiles it supported. Meanwhile, artists and photographers found inspiration in its surreal appearance, capturing its beauty in countless images that further enhanced its fame. The fly geyser, an intriguing blend of human intervention and natural forces, has become a captivating subject for scientific inquiry and ecological fascination. Despite its modest stature of roughly five feet, the geyser's presence exudes a sense of majesty that has drawn the attention of many. Its mound, resembling a living sculpture, is adorned with a vibrant array of colors, reds, greens, yellows, and oranges, whose hues shift with the changing light of day. This remarkable display is courtesy of thermophilic algae thriving in the warm, mineral-rich waters. The surface of the geyser is a masterpiece of mineral deposition, crafted over decades into terraces and pools that gently cascade down its sides. From multiple vents, water erupts, creating a mesmerizing spectacle of steam and spray. This water embarks on a journey from deep within the earth, heated by geothermal energy before surfacing, carrying dissolved minerals that contribute to the geyser's growth. Through a ceaseless cycle of eruption and deposition, the fly geyser has evolved from a mere hole in the ground into a natural wonder. Its growth is an ongoing process, with new layers of mineral deposits accumulating each year. Scientists have been captivated by the rapid rate of mineral accumulation, intrigued by the geyser's unique combination of high silica content and the presence of calcium carbonate, which lend structural integrity and vibrant colors to the formation. This perpetual transformation also shapes the surrounding ecosystem. The warm waters at the geyser's base, ranging from 95 to nearly 200 degrees Fahrenheit, provide a habitat for extremophiles, microorganisms that thrive in extreme conditions. These organisms, including various species of algae and bacteria, form the foundation of a distinct ecosystem, influencing the chemical composition of the pools and perpetuating a delicate balance of life. The Science Behind the Beauty The fly geyser, renowned for its vibrant array of colors and continual expansion, serves as both a symbol of natural beauty and a testament to the intricate interplay between geological processes and biological phenomena. To comprehend the science behind this captivating spectacle, we must delve into the geological foundations that sustain its existence and the biological processes that adorn it with vivid hues. At its core, the fly geyser is a product of geothermal activity, a natural occurrence whereby the Earth's internal heat is transferred to the surface. This narrative commences deep within the Earth's crust, where water permeates through fractures and porous rocks, descending to depths where the planet's molten core exudes significant heat. In this subterranean realm, the water is heated and becomes buoyant, ascending back towards the surface, carrying dissolved minerals from the depths. The geyser's location in Nevada holds particular significance, situated within the Basin and Range Province, a region characterized by its thin crust and active tectonic processes. This geographical setting fosters a conducive environment for geothermal activity, owing to the stretching and thinning of the Earth's crust, which facilitates the escape of heat to the surface and enables water to interact with magma or hot rocks beneath. The genesis of the fly geyser can be traced back to the farmer's drilling, which inadvertently tapped into this pressurized, heated water system, creating a conduit for the water to ascend to the surface and giving rise to the geyser. The water that erupts from the fly geyser carries a diverse array of minerals, with silica and calcium carbonate emerging as the primary constituents responsible for shaping its distinctive structure. Silica emerges as a predominant force in shaping the fly geyser's formation. As the hot water ascends to the cooler surface, silica precipitates out and solidifies into the geyser's mound and terraces. This process, known as silicious sintering, mirrors the formation of stalactites in caves, albeit at an accelerated pace due to the constant influx of silica-rich water. Calcium carbonate, while playing a secondary role, contributes significantly to the layered terraces surrounding the geyser. 
These deposits form as water loses carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, leading to the precipitation of calcium carbonate. The interplay between silica and calcium carbonate deposition gives rise to the geyser's intricate layered structure, with each mineral enhancing the stability and growth of the formation. The vibrant hues adorning the fly geyser are attributed to extremophiles, microorganisms that thrive in environments hostile to most life forms. Bacteria and algae flourish in the geyser's hot, mineral-rich waters, inhabiting niches that would be inhospitable to others. The green and red hues, in particular, are predominantly due to cyanobacteria and other thermophilic algae that colonize the wet surfaces. These organisms possess the remarkable ability to conduct photosynthesis, utilizing sunlight to convert carbon dioxide and water into organic matter while releasing oxygen, a process that further contributes to the unique ecosystem surrounding the geyser. Human and Nature A Symbiotic Relationship the making of the fly geyser shows how people's actions can affect nature. This amazing thing not only shows what happens when people do things without meaning to, but also how humans and nature can work together well. Viewed through the lens of the fly geyser, we uncover a broader narrative exploring how human activities have intertwined with natural forces, resulting in unforeseen environmental outcomes, both positive and negative. The genesis of the fly geyser Spurred by the search for water in a dry landscape, marks a pivotal moment where human intention intersected with the powers of nature. The drilling that inadvertently created a pathway for geothermal waters to surface represents a fusion of human ingenuity with Earth's geothermal forces. Although the initial goal was merely to secure a water source for agricultural needs, the outcome exceeded human expectations, giving birth to a natural wonder that continues to evolve. This interaction underscores the unpredictable nature of human interventions in the environment, where outcomes can sometimes be serendipitous, leading to the emergence of new ecosystems and natural marvels. Throughout history, countless instances have showcased the dual capacity of human actions to generate both positive and negative impacts on the natural world. In the early 20th century, a man-made engineering mishap redirected water from the Colorado River into the arid salt and sink regions of California, inadvertently creating what is now known as the Salton Sea. Initially celebrated as a boon for the area, the sea has since transformed into an ecological puzzle plagued by pollution, high salinity levels, and habitat degradation. This serves as a poignant example of how human interventions in natural water systems can trigger long-lasting and unforeseen ecological repercussions. The catastrophic Chernobyl nuclear accident of 1986 necessitated the evacuation of human populations from the affected vicinity. In the absence of human interference, the Chernobyl exclusion zone has witnessed a remarkable resurgence in wildlife populations, including species previously deemed rare or endangered in the region. This unexpected turn of events underscores nature's remarkable resilience and its ability to thrive when relieved of human pressures. An ambitious initiative aimed at combating desertification in the Sahel region involves planting an extensive belt of trees across Africa. This project not only seeks to halt the encroachment of the Sahara Desert, but also aims to bolster biodiversity, create employment opportunities, and enhance living conditions for millions of people. This endeavor exemplifies how deliberate and sustainable human interventions can play a pivotal role in fostering significant environmental improvements. The Legacy and Future of Fly Geyser The Fly Geyser is a stunning wonder created by both people and nature. It started out unknown but has now become a popular attraction for artists, scientists, and visitors. Its bright colors and mysterious appearance have fascinated many and led to discussions about taking care of our environment and being responsible in how we interact with nature in today's world. For artists, the Fly Geyser's surreal beauty serves as the perfect muse, with its kaleidoscope of colors and otherworldly forms, inspiring works that delve into the sublime and surreal. Its alien landscape challenges creators to explore the delicate balance between nature and human intervention, prompting reflection on the blurred boundaries between the natural and the artificial. From a scientific perspective, the geyser is viewed as a living laboratory, offering a unique opportunity to study geothermal activity, mineral deposition, and extremophile ecosystems. 
Ongoing research at Flygeyser provides valuable insights into geobiological processes and the adaptability of life in extreme environments, transcending the boundaries of its steaming waters. Tourists and nature enthusiasts flock to the spectacle of the Flygeyser, drawn not only by its breathtaking beauty, but also by the profound connection it offers to the natural world. Its allure lies in its ability to inspire wonder and awe, serving as a poignant reminder of the Earth's dynamic and ever-changing nature. The burgeoning intrigue surrounding the fly geyser thrusts into the limelight the pressing issue of conservation. As a natural spectacle that has captured the public's imagination, it grapples with the delicate balance between accessibility and preservation. The intricate ecosystems and delicate allure enveloping the geyser demand meticulous stewardship to shield it from the potential harm of human interaction and to ensure its enduring legacy for future generations. Conservation endeavors must navigate the ethical complexities inherent in human engagement with such natural wonders. Thought-provoking questions arise regarding the permissible extent of human intervention, the moral imperative to uphold the sanctity of these sites, and the indispensable role of stewardship in safeguarding these marvels of nature. The Fly Geyser's story serves as a poignant reminder of the imperative for sustainable tourism practices, educational outreach, and community involvement in conservation initiatives. These measures are pivotal in preserving the geyser as a wellspring of inspiration and knowledge while safeguarding its ecological and geological integrity. What happens to places like Fly Geyser depends on how well we take care of the Earth's treasures. Thinking ahead, Fly Geyser reminds us to talk more about how we're connected to the Earth and what happens when we do things that affect its beauty. In a time when the environment faces challenges, Fly Geyser's story shows how things can change for the better. It shows that even unexpected things can be important for nature, and it urges us to protect these special places and treat our environment with care and respect. Before we move on, here's today's subscriber's pick. Take a look at this image. Look exactly like a man dug in the middle of the desert to find water and what happened next terrified the world. Gazing at the vastness of the whole, one might find it difficult to believe, yet it exists, nestled in the remote reaches of Australia. Australia, renowned for its natural wonders such as breathtaking beaches and cascading waterfalls, offers a setting where an underground marvel like this seems entirely plausible. This remarkable cavity resides in Cooper Pedy, an area situated in the arid Australian outback, a region predominantly characterized by desert landscapes. Cooper Pedy traces its origins back to 1915, when it was established by gold miners seeking fortune beneath the Earth's surface. Remarkably, the residents of this unique settlement have fashioned their lives underground. Within the depths of Cooper Pedy's subterranean world, lie astonishing treasures awaiting discovery. From exquisitely appointed hotel rooms to intricately designed churches, and from well-stocked bookstores catering to avid readers to jewelry stores offering shimmering delights, the underground realm of Cooper Petty boasts a captivating array of attractions. So viewers, what do you make of this remarkable location? Would you consider making it your home? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Discovery of Lac de Gafsa in the Tunisian Desert Back in 2014, an extraordinary discovery unfolded in the heart of Tunisia's desert. It was an ordinary day for a shepherd guiding his flock through the vast, scorching landscape. Amidst the golden sands, something unusual caught his eye. A glimmer of blue amidst the monotonous beige. Intrigued, he approached, and to his astonishment, found himself standing before a pristine turquoise lake a stark contrast to the arid surroundings. At first, disbelief clouded his mind. A lake in the desert? It seemed improbable. Yet, as he dipped his hands into the cool, clear water and saw his sheep eagerly drink, reality settled in. Here was an unexpected oasis, providing precious relief from the relentless sun. Word of the shepherd's discovery soon spread, and even children ventured to witness the marvel of the blue lake. However, their joy was short-lived. Gradually, an unsettling transformation occurred. The once brilliant azure waters turned murky and unappealing, casting a shadow over the once enchanting site. This puzzling change didn't escape the notice of scientists, 
who delved into the mystery with fervor. Their investigations unveiled a sobering truth. The lake had fallen victim to stagnation, becoming a breeding ground for harmful bacteria. What was once a source of life had succumbed to environmental imbalance, serving as a stark reminder of the delicate equilibrium of nature. The Tunisia region is renowned for its substantial phosphate deposits, a geological treasure that harbors a potentially hazardous secret. Phosphate, prone to disintegration, leaves behind radioactive remnants, posing a severe health risk, notably an increased likelihood of cancer. It's suspected that these radioactive substances might have seeped into the waters of the lake, contributing to its ominous dark green, creamy hue. Despite fervent warnings issued by scientists and geologists regarding the lake's perilous nature, their cautions fell on deaf ears. People, driven by necessity or curiosity, continued to disregard the risks, opting to swim in its tainted waters. Some justified their actions by citing the need for water after enduring the arid expanse of the desert. A prevailing theory proposes that the formation of the Tunisia Lake could be attributed to seismic activity, namely, an earthquake. But how could an earthquake possibly birth a lake, you might wonder? Allow me to shed some light. When seismic tremors shake the earth, they can disrupt the surface, causing rocks to shift and water to emerge. This phenomenon, albeit gradual, can eventually culminate in the creation of a lake. However, regardless of its origins, caution remains paramount. It's strongly advised to refrain from swimming in any lake discovered within the Tunisia desert region, as the hue of its waters serves as a telltale sign of potentially harmful algae and bacteria accumulation. The Australia Pink Lake in the Desert. Did you know there's a mesmerizing pink lake out there? Well, now you do. This pink marvel is one of the many mysteries tucked away in desert landscapes. The Australia Pink Lake stands out as another remarkable example, boasting its unique charm amidst the arid terrain. With its vivid pink hue and shallow waters, this lake beckons visitors to swim and capture its captivating beauty in photos. But what exactly lends this lake its striking pink color? Scientists have offered some intriguing explanations. According to their hypothesis, the lake's coloration can be attributed to three microorganisms thriving within its salt crust. One of these organisms, Dunaliella salina, a type of green microalgae, contains a red pigment called beta-carotene. Beta-carotene, a precursor to vitamin A, imparts the reddish tint to the algae, thus contributing to the pink hue of the lake. Another contributor is halobacteria, a group of salt-loving bacteria that produce a reddish pigment, thriving in high saline environments like the Pink Lake. Additionally, carotenoids, organic dyes present in Dunella salina and halobacteria, also play a role in producing red, orange, or pink colors in the lake. However, despite these proposed explanations, a recent study suggests that these bacteria alone may not be solely responsible for the lake's pink coloration. So, what then causes this mesmerizing phenomenon? While scientists continue to explore, recent research has shed light on another intriguing factor, the presence of Dunaliella algae at the lake's bottom. This particular algae secretes a red pigment, which, when combined with sunlight, high temperatures, and slight precipitation, contributes to the lake's vibrant pink hue. Interestingly, Australia is not the only place where such phenomena occur. Similar pink lakes can be found in various locations worldwide, including Spain's Sagal, the Crimean Peninsula, Azerbaijan, Tanzania, Bolivia, Kenya, and Mexico. These lakes, adorned with their red pigments and high salt content, add a touch of enchantment to landscapes across the globe. The Pitch Lake, situated in the southwestern reaches of Trinidad, Nestled in the Southern Caribbean, lies the enigmatic marvel known as the Pitch Lake. Its origins date back millennia, believed to have formed through a fascinating process where oil deposits seeped through fractures in the Earth's crust, intermingling with mud and vegetation. The result? A startling expanse resembling leather, a sight that has captivated onlookers worldwide. The peculiar nature of this lake prompts curiosity. How could a body of water yield a texture akin to leather? Well, the Pitch Lake defies convention. Rather than water, it boasts an immense reservoir of asphalt, solidified over time. 
Research has confirmed its status as the largest repository of asphalt globally, a testament to its geological significance. What truly astonishes is the sheer scale of this natural wonder. Towering approximately 250 feet in height, it dwarfs iconic landmarks like the Statue of Liberty, standing proud and imposing against the Trinidadian landscape. The emergence of this Caribbean anomaly finds explanation in the region's geological makeup. Positioned within a zone of subduction, where tectonic plates collide at a measured pace of a few to several miles, the formation of such an extraordinary feature becomes more comprehensible. When the plates within the lithosphere collide, particularly in denser and thicker regions, they give rise to a fascinating phenomenon, the generation of oils from natural gases. These oils, including methane, hydrogen sulfide, and carbon dioxide, migrate towards the surface of the plates, becoming visible to the human eye. As they emerge, they form semi-solid areas, creating a unique walkable surface. This surface, composed of asphalt, accumulates atop the pitch lake, offering a tangible resource for human use. Significantly, a substantial portion of the world's asphalt used in road construction originates from the Caribbean Pitch Lake. Notable examples include the Lincoln Tunnel and the roads leading to esteemed landmarks such as Buckingham Palace in Great Britain. Furthermore, the Pitch Lake bestows an unexpected benefit, a texture reminiscent of elephant skin. This surprising attribute arises from a blend of clay, silt, sand, and the oils produced in the tectonic plate's thicker regions. Once mixed, this material bears a striking resemblance to elephant skin and can be fashioned into various useful items, such as bags and shoes. Recent scientific explorations have unveiled the presence of nearly 10 million tons of hot materials within the lake. However, due to the absence of water and the pervasive presence of asphalt, the lake is devoid of life. The extreme conditions render it unsafe for drinking or swimming, a stark reminder of nature's intricate balance and its occasional hostility to human habitation. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.